Okay guys, today's video is going to be on using um, your TIMS, your Transmission Impairment Measurement Set, um, to um, measure audio levels in DBMs and um, how that's done and why we do it and what it means. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, start off with a uh, just a demonstration of the uh, of the normal classic setup where I have a signal generator that's putting out zero dB and I'm measuring it with my uh, with my meter and I want to show you uh, how that is and uh, how that works and when we when we're talking about 600 ohms and 600 ohm circuits what what does that mean? What, why why are they 600 ohms? Um, and how does that apply to when we go to test? So to start with, I just wanted to go uh, quickly over the um, the the configuration I have here. Um, I have a, a tone generator, and um, uh, it's set up to be the perfect uh, uh, audio source. Uh, it has an external 600 ohm. Uh, resistor that represents uh, the combination of the two of what it would be if it was a true uh, a signal generator um, uh, a 600 ohm signal generator and I split it out so that I could put a voltmeter across the internal load resistance to, to give you a, a demonstration of how those work um, this is the uh, output of the circuit here and right now I have it terminated with a 600 ohm uh, uh, resistor and the two meters here the one in the middle um, is showing me the the audio measured in dBm and the fluke to the right of it is showing me its uh, its measurement in volts uh, AC RMS so um, that's uh, that's our basic setup. Um, I wanna I wanna talk first about what 600 ohms means and why we use it. Um, it it gets down to um, when whenever you're doing a uh, an audio generator, you want to make sure that the 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 source uh, the internal resistance of the generator matches the expected resistance of the load. Um, um, that's because of what's called the maximum power transfer theory. And what that, that law says is that anytime you have a generator, you can get the most power out uh, to the device if it's the, the load and the internal impedance match. If the load is less than the internal impedance, it'll make the, the generator put out more power but the extra power will be dissipated across the internal resistance and if you increase the, the loads resistance from the internal the entire output power of the, of, uh, of the whole circuit goes down and less uh, power goes to the load so it reaches its peak point of power to the load when it's exactly the same um, um, measurement as the um, the internal. So uh, what we have here would be an audio generator and when the switch is six, set to 600 this internal resistor will be 600 and it's expecting a 600 ohm load out here. So um, you can do some more uh, reading on that but this is basically where they come up with that 600 ohms. The 600 ohms uh, has a long history in the telephone uh, world and uh, they used that uh, value uh, a while back and so that, that's, that's where the number 600 came from. But we're pretty much in the legacy world now to where uh, that's, that's why we're using it. But that's, the, uh, that's where the 600 ohms comes from and um, let me um, let me let me look at have you look at what we currently have set up on the bench right now so this is um, over here this is my um, 
my signal generator here putting out a constant uh, voltage. Uh, I have my external resistor. Um, I have the first fluke meter hooked up across this uh, internal resistor. And then I have the output here, which is properly terminated. And um, what I want you to see is, is that right now, when we have uh, uh, 0 dB out here on, on the output, we're actually uh, producing uh, twice that from the generator itself. It, and we do a little simple voltage divider here where we split up uh, the voltage so we're going to drop half the power inside and half the power to the load and this is um, um, this is your um, classic setup if you will um, uh, with your normal operation um, and this is where we can come in and make a measurement right here of the zero dBm because the big the big thing to understand about when you're measuring in dBm is, is that all it is is it's just a voltmeter it is not an actual power meter in other words to, to get the real power you would have to interrupt the circuit and measure the current and the voltage at the same time uh, to get the actual power. But because power is also equal to voltage squared divided by resistance, if you know your resistance, you can do the math on your voltmeter and turn it into dBm. But that display of dBm on your meter is only accurate and is only legitimate if there is a true 600 ohm load. Uh, present. If there is no 600 ohm load, then you can't, or if it's more than 600 or less than 600 uh, in any way, you can no longer use the DBM system to describe the voltage. You have to go back to using standard voltage levels. Um, so, in this uh, current setup, I wanted to show you again, we got uh, we got a nice uh, split between the two resistors and we got 0 dBm uh, 1 milliwatt dropping out here across our load which is uh, let's get this uh, in. so we're dropping the 1 milliwatt across here and we're also dropping another milliwatt across the internal resistor that's uh, hooked up to the, uh, the voltmeter on the left there so this is our classic setup now let's take a look at our next scenario of when we have an unterminated circuit and when we're unterminated now our level goes up to 6 dB and the question is well why why does it why does it go up to 6 dB if there is no um, uh, load on there well, uh, let's bring up the circuit and have a look and it'll make sense to you. So when you uh, remove the, the load from the circuit, there's no longer a current path. So the, the voltage generator here can't produce current going around. So all of the um, uh, voltage coming from here will be measured across these two points which is the, your 1.55 volts. Now, because uh, there, and there will be no voltage drop across your uh, resistor here uh, and no power drop because there's no current flow. Now, if you look over at our voltage chart, you'll notice that 1.55 volts just happens to be plus 6 dB. And that's why your, the meter is falsely reading 6 dB. Um, we're not actually putting out um, uh, uh, four milliwatts of power into the air. There is no power being uh, distributed anywhere, either across the uh, resistor here uh, or, like I said, out here. Um, and that's why it's giving you this false reading of 6 dB because it's showing the full uh, power twice of what the you're normally supposed to see. 
uh, because of it, the twin up here. Now, um, if if we uh, take a look at this um, uh, on our meters there, you'll see that we're not dropping any voltage except the little trickle voltage going across, and that's because of the the internal leakage of the meter. Um, and it's not the flukes. I, I wondered which what was bringing it in, and it's actually uh, this meter here. If you unplug it, you'll see the current goes down to absolutely zero, no voltage, and you get the full the full output there on the last uh, uh, on the last meter. But anyway, um, so there's that's where your six dB comes from when they talk about an an, an open circuit, and like I said, that's a lie. It's not really 6 dB. Uh, it's just a translation on the voltage chart. If it was actually hooked up across a 600 ohm load and it had that voltage on it, then it would represent that power, but it's not. Uh, you can see the voltage here, but it's not going across any load. So now let's take a look at our, our next example, which is, well, what if you short the load? What happens then? Well, when you short the load, it doesn't actually, um, uh, it doesn't hurt the generator, and I'll, and I'll show you why. Um, and if you look at our meters now, you'll notice that obviously on the output uh, that the two meters on the right are looking at sees absolutely nothing because it's a dead short. However, the voltmeter across the internal resistance shows the full voltage going across it. Now let me, uh, let me bring that up and you can see what this looks like uh, elect uh, electrically. So when we put the short across here, we obviously can't measure anything with a meter because it's just a piece of wire, but we do have a, uh, that does give us a path for current flow and now all the current, uh, all the voltage that is coming out of the um, generator will now be sent across the internal resistance of the uh, amplifier here. So it will be dropping all of that uh, voltage and it will have two milliwatts of power that it will dissipate when it does it. So um, that's, but the, the generator here should remain constant. As you can see on, the, on, the, on our voltmeter there, it did get pulled a little bit low but that's just the uh, that's just because the uh, the the generators here aren't perfect. Even though it is a high impedance uh, output, uh, we still pull the voltage down a little bit, uh, but not much. It's just uh, maybe a half a volt. But um, that's our uh, that's our condition when we have a, a shorted um, uh, connection. Now let's take a look at the uh, the one that gets most people, which is the double termination. Um, that one is um, uh, tricky because it does a, a unique level. So I'm going to first put in the normal uh, termination. You can see we're at 0 dB and um, everything looks good. Now I'm going to add a second termination which would represent um, a meter that's brought in that has the termination added to it. Um, as a matter of fact, I could do it right here on, on the meter itself if I come over here and terminate. And you'll see now that our level went down by, uh, by a little more, about three and a half, a little more than three and a half uh, dB. And like, oh, okay, uh, why? Why, why did it, what, what's with that number and what does it mean? Well, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the circuit behind it. Now, when you're double terminated, what you're actually doing is you're presenting two 600 ohms uh, loads in parallel. And when two 600 ohms are in parallel, they are the equivalent of 300 ohms. Um, so now when you look at when you look at the thevenized circuit here you'll have a 600 ohm resistor in series with a 300 ohm resistor 
So what you're going to have is you're going to have uh, two thirds of the voltage dropped across the internal resistance and you're going to have one third of the um, um, uh, of the voltage dropped across out here on the load. Now when you uh, go to actually measure the voltage it says it's 0.52. Now when you pull up the little chart here and look and you say 0.52 oh there's that's where that number comes from. It's uh, minus 3 dBm uh, it's going to be a little bit more that's where that number comes from. It doesn't mean that this is accurate though uh, because we don't have 0 0.52 volts across 600 ohms we have 0 0.52 volts across 300 ohms so um, it's actually putting out 88 um, uh, or 0.88 milliwatts instead of the 0.44 milliwatts that the minus 3 dBm shows you. So that's a false reading and it's no and it's not accurate. So it's no cause it's no longer 600 ohms. So this is another example of um, the meter is not telling the truth because you changed the rules on it. The meter the meter says I will do the math but you got to make sure that the resistance doesn't change because if the resistance doesn't change if the resistance changes then my my math calculation of of that minus three minus four there on the uh, screen will um, uh, come in so um, that's but it's a good habit to know that when all of a sudden you're looking to measure something and you see it down three three and a half dB it's like oh I bet something's something's double terminated uh, and the way you can tell is if you come in and uh, uh, unterminate one part of it and and bridge it up if you see it go back up uh, that three and a half DB then you know that's what was going on that you were in fact uh, double terminated and that's why you were seeing it low um, so once again uh, we got our normal uh, termination there if we don't terminate properly and we look at it we'll see plus six which uh, again is a false reading but that's what it shows and then uh, our last case was the shorted and that's when we see absolutely nothing but we're not hurting our meter so um, anyway uh, that's kind of like a, uh, a look at the, the, the TIMS and sending tones. I know it's very confusing uh, at times, but if you play with it enough and you, and you get comfortable with the situations, uh, you'll understand. But in the end, just remember, it's just a voltmeter. That's all it is. It's not really measuring power. It's just doing a, a little mathematical calculation for you. Uh, I won't get into why we use decibels uh, for audio uh, levels. That's a whole complicated separate story. But just know that we do and that's why. And so anytime you're doing adjustments on radios, uh, especially repeaters and other bass radios, that's what uh, those outputs on your transmit and receive are set up for. And they're set up for the 600 ohms. So. Alright guys, that'll do it for today. See you soon.